Hi everybody, Jerry here from Vidita Studio and today I'm going to share with you how to use those five free pointers available in our starter pack. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so you can download the free starter pack by clicking the link in the description below. You can just then double click to unzip it. It will give you this folder. In the folder, you have a couple of things. You have the license, the installation instruction, the DRFX file, and the font. For the pointer, they don't use font, but please make sure to install all the font included. Otherwise, the other title will not work. So just select all the font, double click on it, and start the installation process. Once the font are installed, you can go ahead and install the DRFX file. By simply double click on it, it will just prompt open this window. Then here, click install me it's already installed so you could just click overwrite to replace it and then you can just restart davinci resolve once in davinci resolve you can find the pointers by going over to effect titles and then here video the studio you can just scroll down to free starter pack and here you will have all the title in the free starter pack including here the pointers the first pointers is a box so here i'm going to demonstrate by bringing some screen recording so let's say here I'm bringing a screen recording for a tutorial, for example, and I want to just uh, put the focus on a specific parameter here in the inspector. I could use that pointer right there, drag it over my clip, and then here we could just adjust the position of that pointer. So we're going to go over to my inspector. Here I'm going to go over to controls, and then we're going to adjust the position to just drag it above the inspector. And then here we're going to adjust the width to make it match the width of the inspector. We're going to reposition it properly right there. And then we can adjust the height. And right now we could adjust the border width because right now it's pretty thick. We want to have something that is a bit thinner to match a bit more the UI right now. Also here I can adjust the corner radius. I don't want to have a square angle. I want to have a bit more rounded angle. We could adjust that right here with the corner radius. Here I'm going to reduce the width a little bit and we can adjust the position once more. And now if we play it, we get our first pointer. Now we don't have an animation out. So if I want to activate the animation out, I can simply just toggle here the animation out in the inspector and now we'll have the animation out as well. And you can obviously extend that title to whatever lessons you want. Now the second one is a cursor and it's animated here to make a click and then getting out of the screen and we can use that in combination with another title for example here the social media if i'm bringing this social media title in as you can see there is an animation here on the button going from follow to following and if we want we can use that pointer uh, in correlation with the title bring the cursor right above the title right here and then if we just adjust the position of that cursor to put it above the following here in size and position it will just match the animation and if we play it as you can see we have that cursor coming in and clicking on the following button if you're for example using a different title and the timing doesn't match you can always choose the animation lens uh, in second of that animation in and you can adjust also the timing by moving the cursor around and make sure that the moment where the cursor is clicking is matching the moment of the other action below it here another cool thing is that you can choose between different cursor styles so you have the arrow you have the end and you have the second arrow. As you can see right now, it's white on white, so it's not popping up a lot. So we could adjust that by going over to shadow control and here we could increase the shadow strength. And then here adjusting a bit the drop angle and the drop distance. I need to help us create a better separation between the cursor and the title. Then the third one is a dotted circle rotating. There is no animation in for this one, but here uh, a cool tip is that simply you can take those handles and uh, create a small opacity animation. So here, for example, we're gonna create a one second animation on the intro. So here we have an opacity animation and we can do the same thing here on the out. So we have an opacity animation on the out as well. You can adjust the colors and you can adjust here a few control like the overall level of the pointer, the width of the circle, the border width here of those line and then the lens of the dotted line. So here if we bring the level again to the maximum and we increase the lens to the maximum, it's just a full circle. But if we just reduce all that, as you can see now, it's only uh, dots. If you want, you could use this with a tracker. So here, for example, we're gonna bring a clip in our timeline. I'm gonna choose to point at this uh, yellow tennis ball. So here, I'm gonna start tracking around there. I'm just gonna make my cut. And then I'm just gonna move a few frames forward. And I'm gonna stop my clip here because then my tracker gonna completely lose the ball. So here, I'm just gonna focus on that. 
I'm gonna right click on my clip, go create a new fusion clip, and then we're gonna move over to fusion. Once in fusion, you can simply go over to effect, template, and then here you can search for dotted and bring the dotted circle in the working area. Then you can link the output of that to the media in. Then here, we're just gonna select all media in one and it shifts pairs on all cables and search for a tracker node. And we're gonna bring that in. We're gonna go at frame zero. And then here, we're gonna bring that tracker on our tennis ball. We're gonna reduce here the box and the area for the tracker to look for the ball. Then here, we're gonna switch adaptive mode from none to best match. And we're gonna just track forward. Then here, we're simply gonna pin our tracker and we're gonna go back to our dotted circle. We're gonna open the control and here we're gonna right click on center, click expression, and we're gonna link the center of our circle dotted to the tracker center right there. Now we can simply adjust the overall size of the pointer. And here we could reduce, for example, the lens line and the border width to make it match. And now for played, as you can see, we have our pointers following the ball. We can go back to the edit page and it will work as well there. Then the first one is a highlighter and could be used here to highlight something, for example, in an article or same here parameter, for example, in the inspector. So you could just drag the highlighter over your clip. Right now it's not showing right away because we have a white background and the highlighter is white also by default. So we can simply go over to color and here, for example, switch it for something like yellow click OK. And now as you can see, we have it on screen. We can then adjust the position. So here I'm just going to drag it over the first sentence, for example. So we're just going to drag that here on the DaVinci Resolve. I'm then going to adjust the height just to make it match the line spacing and register the position slightly like so. Then we can adjust the width. So here I'm going to extend the width to just highlight the entire part that I want to be highlight. And as you can see right now, it's simply masking the text that is below it. So we're just going to reduce the opacities to reveal the text behind. So like that at 50% is fine. But if you have the possibility to put the highlight behind the text right now, it's just a JPEG. So I don't have that possibility. But if you have a PDF that is a PNG or if the text is natively done in DaVinci Resolve, I will suggest that instead of using the opacity, you keep the opacity at one to have like more vivid color and you have that highlighter behind the text. And here we go you get that highlight animation then you can just tick here the animation out if you want to have the animation out as well and it will just unhighlight the text and then the last one is underline animation right there so i'm gonna use the same example and drag it here on my timeline and same issue here we have it white on white so it's not popping up right away so i'm gonna go over to color and here i'm gonna switch it for red and now we're going to underline the black magic design, for example. So I'm going to go over to control. I'm going to reduce the size slightly and I'm going to adjust the position to bring it here around the black magic design. Like so, I'm going to reduce the size again slightly, move it a bit to the size. And here you can switch between either single line like that, or you can have double line like before. Right now, because we don't have a lot of space between the two lines, I'm actually gonna go with underline single right here. So it doesn't obstruct the second line right below it. And then here, I'm simply gonna adjust a bit the timing. So the two animation not happening at the same time. So I'm gonna slightly move it to the side, maybe one second forward, for example. And then here, I'm gonna reduce the overall length of the title and activate the animation out. And here you go, that's the underline pointer. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next. And see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.